Have you ever went to your local Petco and wanted to buy an aquatic plant and you purchase one and you bring it home only to find out that it's not truly an aquatic plant? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you could tell the difference between most of them as well as a full list on some that you should not buy from Petco. All right, guys, so welcome back. Justin from at H2O Plants on Instagram. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Petco plants and plants that you should not buy from them for your aquarium. But before we do that, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out any future videos much like this one or any other kind of aquarium content. Today we're going to be touching about plants that you should not buy from Petco for your aquarium. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't buy these plants. These plants are typically buy plants and could be put in say a hang on back filter, could be put in a terrarium, a um, pilotarium, a, anything like that that has a moisture level to it. But the, these plants cannot be fully submerged in water. All right so when you go to Petco the problem is is these plants are are typically inside an, uh, an aquarium and you would think that oh if they're inside water they must be fine for my tank well that's not the case what happens is you're gonna take these plants home you're gonna put them in your aquarium one you're either gonna see lots of melt back you're gonna go on like say forums or Facebook pages and ask people is this an aquarium plant and then they're gonna tell you it's not to remove it meanwhile that plant that's melting in your aquarium is actually uh, worsening your water condition by adding uh, decomposing plant matter that does nothing to your aquarium other than raise your nit nitrate and other things that you don't want to raise in your aquarium that quickly. So this is no fault to really Petco. Well, I do kind of blame Petco. I don't blame it on individual stores because these people would not know what plants are what. Typically, you're not gonna find a plant um, expert in these locations. So it really comes down from Petco as a chain store to maybe change the way they display these plants, maybe put them in a bog or a terrarium type setup so that way people can distinguish the differences. So in hopes of this video, I hope that may Maybe this somehow gets to them and they change that because the common question that I get asked all the time every week probably several times a week is this plant an aquarium plant or I got this from Petco can you help me identify it and when I do and I tell them that's not an aquarium plant people are really kind of upset about it so uh, hopefully they watch this and you know maybe make a change to the way they display these plants but uh, let's get into the list of plants all right so before we get into this I want to credit uh, Talon Ball from fishforums.com he actually made a whole post about 20 or 30 plants deep of all the plants that Petco has in these tanks that aren't truly aquatic plants. And uh, I'm gonna list them all here. I'll also put them in the description as well as a link to that forum post. But I do wanna isolate a couple different ones. So the first one actually being bamboo. Now we sell bamboo, but you see here the leaves are above the water. The problem is, is typically they have them in the water completely submerged. Now bamboo, and bamboo by lucky bamboo I mean, is actually a Drakina species. And there's actually several Drakina species on this list but this is one of the more common ones because people see this and they're like oh hey that's really cool but you can't submerge where the leaves come out of the plant if you submerge this part the plant will eventually die you can only keep this stalk in the water and the roots so you can come you can about halfway submerge it but after you get to that point you you can't submerge it any longer so that's number one lucky bamboo it's not an aquatic plant but you can stick it in your aquarium it helps absorb nitrates and if you could prop it up somehow uh, it actually makes for a good plant. Now, another plant that I oft, often get pictures of, and it's probably by far the most um, sent picture, is the purple waffle plant. And I'll throw a picture up of it because I don't have that plant, nor would I. Um, but that is truly just a terrarium bog plant. Um, it can't be submerged underwater. And I think why it's so popular is because it has a purple color, and people are always looking for adding red plants or uh, different colored plants into their aquarium. And that being, you know, so vibrant purple people are like just immediately drawn to it so I don't suggest that one it will die back it's not a good aquarium plant but it does make it for a good terrarium or bog plant so if you have one of those definitely get it the other plant is mondo grass and I think the reason why mondo grass gets sold so often because it looks so much familiar to both blixa and vowels and they could be easily mistaken if you didn't know any better so mondo grass it kind of looks like a valcinarium plant it's got these big bushy leaves and it looks like grass but it's not truly aquatic it's it's actually an outdoor plant also. You can put it outdoors, um, a palm plant, bog plant, that kind of stuff. So that's another one, don't recommend. Okay, and so the last plant that I wanted to go over is Drakina cinderian or all 
also called the sandy plant. Now it's similar to bamboo. It has a, a kind of a central stalk system, but it has a white and green variegated leaf pattern to it or striped leaf pattern. Well, it looks truly amazing. This one I also get quite often it sent to me if, you know, to ID it. And it's also not an aquarium plant. Like the others, it's a good bog and terrarium plant, but it cannot be fully submerged as well as all the other ones on the list that I included below. Okay, so now I wanted to kind of just touch on how you can identify if a plant is going to be good for your aquarium or not when you go into these uh, local stores. Well, step one, I would suggest doing your research even before you purchase. If you see a cool plant that you think is really neat looking, either refer to this video or go to the Facebook groups or fish forums, take a picture of the plant and post it up there and ask people, is this an aquarium plant? Nine times out of 10, they're going to be able to tell you right away if it is or isn't. There's a lot of experienced hobbyists that have had the same issue where they've gone into Petco or PetSmart or any one of these chain stores, bought a plant, and it turned out not to be it. But here's an easy tip on how you can identify or at least know if most of these plants are aquarium plants or not. All right, so I have here a sword plant. Now, while this has been grown immersed when we get it in, so there is some immersed grown leaves which are above the water growth, and those will typically stand straight up, you can see there's some new underwater growth and it does flop over. That's what you're looking for in a aquarium plant when you're trying to see if it is a truly aquatic or not. One, it'll have uh, some growth on it and the growth will actually flop over and won't st stand straight up. And this is true for almost all the plants. The other way to tell is if you take one of the plants out of the water and leave it out of the water for about 10 minutes or so, the leaf will completely dry up and start to curl um, because it's losing moisture. Aquatic plants have a membrane that don't retain moisture inside the leaves. So in order for them to stay wet and, and actually be able to function, they need to be fully submerged. But when you take one out, out of the water, it doesn't have that membrane that locks in moisture inside the cell walls. So therefore it can dry out very quickly. So if you ever are curious and you don't know, and maybe nobody's answering you on the forums, ask to take the plant out, wait there maybe five, 10 minutes, see what happens to the leaf most of the time if they completely dry out and they start to kind of curl or like shrivel up you'll be able to tell that they're losing significant moisture uh, relatively quickly and then you know that's not an aquatic plant now that's not to say that Petco and PetSmart and all these other companies don't have good plants to offer for a beginner aquarium hobbyist there are several that I found uh, I did actually get some footage while I was in Petco of them and I can touch them on a future video but let me down in the comments below have you ever had this happen to you where you bought a plant from one of these big chain stores turned out not to be an aquatic plant um, and if you would like to see my maybe top five of the plants you can buy from Petco that will work in your aquarium leave it down below anyway guys thank you so much for watching the video hit the like button as always and I will see you guys on the next one